Okay, here we go. Well, well, well welcome back, everyone. I am Tessa38 here again, and I have returned with Missy Ryder. Say hello. Hello. And we are actually doing something different today. We are actually playing something on the GameCube. A game that we both are extremely fond of, and the rest of the world seems to hate. I, don't, I think they forgot about it. I don't get that, too, because I've talked with this about people. Like, about how much they like Crystal Chronicles. And the consensus tends to be either, eh, that game was okay, or that game was incredibly blind and forgettable. And I'm just like, I don't get that. I mean, it's not the best game ever, but... I thought it was fun. It is. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna get to why I think this game's pretty good, but there's a lot to talk about, though. Um, this game is amazingly complex for its target audience, too, because... The first thing that I was impressed with is just the way it opens. I love this song, which we'll be talking over, but... God, I love that song. 
It's such a beautiful song. Although I looked up the lyrics to it and I think they might, some of them might be a little odd or nonsensical. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't think maybe they were real translated from the Japanese, but um, it sounds so beautiful. Um, you mean Blood Forest Trauma? That's because... That's, I think... I think that's the word people use for when when you look at the lyrics from a song and they either seem kind of repetitive or they just by if the lyrics by themselves don't sound good, but when they're mixed in with the music and the singer, it sounds better. That's called blood force trauma, and I'm just I like I haven't heard that. I was just thinking they were probably in Japanese and they were translated, and maybe they were translated in a way that they were translated very strictly Japanese, like. English, like maybe just English to Japanese without really arranging things. Um. But the music is some of the best parts. I, I'm not big, you know, I'm not the kind of person who actually notices video game music. Like it's supposed to fade to the background, but I always notice this music because it's very, it's very atmospheric. It's a very atmospheric game, which is something I always look for in a video game or in anything really. Another thing that I kind of like is the fact that this game doesn't talk down to you. It really doesn't. Actually, you do have to pay attention to the little cutscenes that you think don't really mean anything. You actually do have to pay attention to them for the final boss. Yeah. <laughs> you call that rule. Yeah, I did. I did that too. I did that too. <laughs> um... Uh, honestly, that's what I should have done for this playthrough, but I wasn't paying attention, and I kept... Oh, well. I always call my place Kippa 2. Now, there's another thing that I really like, is the customization. It is so I don't know awesome. About customization. As in... I'll have to pick a character name. Uh... For some reason, I always pick the name... Um, how's it pronounced? C-R? No, not Sia. <laughs> That's how it warriors. C-E-I-L-A. I forgot how to pronounce that. C I don't know why, I just really like the sound of that name, even if it means blind. C-I-E-L? C-E. C-E? C-E-I-I-L-A, I think. Sila. Sila, that's the name. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I always named it all that. Um, which one would you? Which one do you want me to use? Uh, that one I don't care. Uh, I always use the um clever, so I'd kind of rather you do something else different than I was doing. So whatever you like. However, you want someone who's who's strong or one who's good at magic. Now. Um, we'll get into that in a second. Different clans. Yeah, um, now, the clans in this are technically less, um, human races and more class-based, because of the way they're utilized. Clavids, so a they... A little bit, um, the Clement and the Lilty, those two are basically humans, really. They're just different races, classes, whatever. Actually, Lilties are more the like Ukes fairies. Are the, like, bird... People. Um, well, Clefits are more, are typically the human class. Lilties look like fairies. Ukes look like... Oh, I got the mix up. It's the Silkies and the Clefits that yeah. are... Silkies, Silkies... They look the most alike. Like, they're basically human looking. Yeah, but Silkies are more like tribesmen, whereas Clefits look more Caucasian. So it's like... Um, yeah, pretty much, but they're still, they look human. Yeah, I know, they're the, they're the two humanoids. Lotis are fairies, and Ukes are supposed to be... Yeah, Lotis are like the really little people. Yeah, Lotis are like the small... Here, I'll, sh I'll show you what they look like. See, they look like yeah, little fairies. Yeah, they look like little fairies. Yeah, it's them. And Ukes look like... If Bottle they're Fist... They're people with the helmets. They always wear the helmets. Yeah. Uh, Have you ever seen the one without a helmet? No, we don't. The helmet is basically their face. So oh, it's like... Okay. Um... Let's see. Um, but like I was saying, they're mostly like classes. Because you have Clavit, who is the most balanced. You have, yeah. you have Silkies, who are mostly balanced, though their magic attack um, goes down a little bit. 
Yeah. However, Silkies have the unique ability to charge up an attack to attack at long range. Which they is, do, yeah, I love, I love that feature. Which is something that the class can do with their physical attack, so they do have a bonus there. Yukes are probably the most broken class in the game, <laughs> because their magic is is already stronger than any other class. Yes. Their, their magic charges up twice as fast, and their magic range is farther, so... Unless you absolutely have to have a physical attacker, the Yukes pretty much break the game. The Lil T's are the exact opposite. Their magic, their magic attack is abysmal, but their physical strength is unparalleled. They get the strongest weapon type, they're the only ones that can get max attack power, and they get a charge attack later on, which hits like eight times with their attacks, so... If you really love physical hits, go nuts. Go nuts with Lil T. I'll be using a Uke this playthrough because it's ju it's just easier. I actually never used a Uke. Honestly, I always took the Clairbrats or the Silkies because I like balance. Now, here's another thing that they introduced. Vocations. Now, vocations are freaking important. Pay attention. Alchemist. Well, I, I think I'll pay, make an alchemist, but just to explain how this works. Um, this, is, this is very important because as the game goes on, you have a family that you have to take care of, and the more you, the more better care you take care of your family, then the more they're going to like you. And your family liking you is important because not only will their services become greater over time, but they'll give you discounts if, you, if, if they really like you. And if they do, then not only will they sell you more rare stuff, but you'll get it for cheap. Now, this is, this is something that's really great and really crappy because... Um, and not only do you um, have to make sure that you have to go every way to help your family, which is going to get kind of annoying later on, and I'll, I'll get to that, but, but, um, but this only applies for you. Now, multiple families do exist inside Type of Village, um, and if you aren't one of, if, if the family you're talking to doesn't belong to you, then you won't get the discount. Though they will sell you all the rare stuff that they would sell to the other guy. So keep that in mind. Now, the way this works is that whenever a year goes by, any family who's, who's already in the caravan will actually level up as the years go by. However, you cannot trade items with your different characters. So... Um, what, 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 what item one person has, they're stuck with it. This, this, this includes materials as well, so... The only way to do this is to go in multiplayer with two GBAs and kind of trade that way. Uh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the GBA thing in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Before that, though, we uh, we get some um, fellow uh, guardsmen right here. Who notices that we're finally leaving on the caravan? In the in the intro, you most undoubtedly saw you notice that Miasmos covered the land. Well, um, the reason that we're out on the caravan in the first place is to get the mer from Mertrees, which is a material which keeps Miasma at bay. But it's temporary. Every year you have to go out, take, take, take a crystal chalice with you, get the mer, come back, and you're set for about a year's time. That will be pretty much what most of the game is about. And if you die, that means your town dies, because they didn't get the protection they needed. Yep, that's exactly right. Which I like when games do that. And if you think of just, not just yourself, like, you fail, your town fails. On top of that, um, 
you, you don't really um, find out about this till later, but the miasma is spreading. For the, for the most part, the miasma hasn't quite reached Taipa yet, but they can't really go outside of Taipa. So if you if you don't have the Crystal Chalice and you try to go outside of Taipa, you're dead. This is the first time I, I've never really played a Final Fantasy game because I only had Nintendo consoles my whole life, except the PlayStation, like, way back when. And even then, my dad bought the game, so he didn't buy, like, he didn't buy RPGs. So this is the first time I ever encountered the Moogles. They are so cute. Yeah, the Moogles have been a part of the game since, I think, Fall Fantasy 3. They're so cute. If there's pedestrians up, I wouldn't mind having one. I love their cute little noises, too. Yeah, I know. Um, would, 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 would you like to touch their pom-pom? <laughs> that sounds suggestive. Well, the pom-poms, like the red thing that's sticking I out. I know what it is, but it sounds suggestive. <laughs> I, like to I like to touch their little pom-pom and their little fuzzy bodies and, like, cuddle them. Oh, oh. My kitties. Oh, God, you're Terra from Dissidia. Run, Moogles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to terrorize them. So, like, there's, like, a running joke with Terra and, like, Dissidia, where, like, where she's... In that game, they kind of bring out that she's really fond of Moogles, and, like, if you see her room, like, she has, like... She's, like, has a, a bunch of Moogle plushies in there. So... I'm gonna go ahead and do the tutorial for people watching, but... Let's just say that the tutorial doesn't do this game justice, because... They do a good job teaching you the controls, but as far as fighting is concerned, it takes some getting used to. For those of you who might be thinking that this game is just a hack and slash, like Dynasty Warriors or Hyrule Warriors, it no. ain't. No. <laughs> it ain't. It's not a power fantasy. <laughs> and I am thankful for that. <laughs> Because this game... Yeah, I, I like that, but, you know, I don't want it in every single game. I actually feel satisfied playing this game. There's a time I play this game, like, every day. It's kind of a digital because you can keep making all these different classes and these different kind of characters and keep going. What did he say? Oh, okay, I have to ask him about stuff. Basically, you just press the button to do an attack. There, you attack. <laughs> yeah. Now, you can also... I don't know if it'll let me do it here. Uh... Yeah, he will. You can do a multiple combo attack, but it's not as easy as you'd think. You can't just mash the button most times. You have to get the timing right. You have to get the timing right. Oh yeah, I love these. Yeah, you can actually use charge attacks, like from Mega Man, to do like a super attack. Which is pretty nice. And you're gonna be using this a lot, let me show you. I'm gonna try to get a patient and just kinda keep whacking at them, but I do that when I try to get their trying to get their right speed down faster. And you can go beyond the red um, circle that the crystal is emulated, but you will take damage if you do. Yeah. So it's not really advised to keep doing that. Yeah, um, you can't see it in the game itself, but this uh, this outer rim... Wait. Oh, they're not going to show it off here, really? Uh, okay, that's kind of stupid. They should show you. Okay. Um... What happens is you take damage, and you can kind of feel it. You can even feel it when you're, like, moving your controller. Yeah. You can feel, like, this heaviness, and it's taking your life away. That's the miasma. Oh, yeah, so let's talk about the command list. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's so cool. That's so fun. The command list is fun to use for a while, but there is one slightly annoying thing about it. Everything is handled to the command list. Well, well, kind of. Um, you don't have to necessarily use items to the command list, but 
And if, if you're outside of the main menu and you want to use like an item or magic or even defending, you have to use the command list. Because of this, you will never see me use the defend option. Why? Because you cannot defend an attack properly. Which makes defend almost worthless unless you're trying to uh, lower damage from magical attacks. But back, but back to the tutorial. Magic is similar to using focus attacks, except you don't have to get close to use them. Oh, and if your Moogle is not using the um, Crystal Chalice, he will sometimes charge up his magic with you to do a team attack. You won't see this very often, though, since I'm going to have Mog handle the Chalice about 75% of the time. <laughs> so, you're probably not going to see Mog contribute too much in that regard. Um, can the tutorial end now, please? And you can only get to do those spells after you get orbs yeah. from defeating enemies that drop them. So you can't, you don't just have them with you all the time. And you can combine ones, too, which is what he's explaining, I believe. Yeah, spell fusion. Now, spell yeah, fusion... You need to kill certain enemies or get rid of certain environmental things. Indeed. However, um, let's see... Do they give me enough? Yeah, they did, okay. Now, a lot of the... You can get a lot of different spells this way, but the only ones that I tend to use a lot are the ones that combine the same element. Because stuff like gravity and slow and all this other stuff, it's very, it's very situational, and I don't like spells that are situational. So, I tend to just stick with the power of spells. Okay, how do I end the... I think you have to talk to him and tell him, you know, I'm cousin. Okay, good. <laughs> Which we've already discussed. Okay. Anything else? About Mog's help. Yeah, Mog is only a single player mode. He will carry the Crystal Chalice so that you don't have to worry about picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. Which is awesome. Um, there is a multiplayer to this game, but but there's a catch to it. In, um, the tutorial doesn't cover it, so I'll talk about it here. Um, in order to play multiplayer, you have to have two um, Game Boy Advances. The GameCube controller will not work, and you have you have to have someone with the game itself, Crystal Chronicles. Plus, you also have to have two Game Link cables to plug it up to the GameCube sockets. If you do, then up to two, up to four people can actually play multiplayer. Now, you know, you want to go through all that trouble. Now that this is where the time Nintendo is kind of pushing for that thing, but really they're they're pushing way too hard because that's really stupid when you think, why can't you just plug in a controller? Now that 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 would be bad enough. But in multiplayer, there's no pause. Everything is done real time. So if you if you want to change your command list, or you want to heal your party members, or you want to um, just boost up your stats using food, and there's an enemy around, you're going to get hit while you're doing that. I hate it when games push the real time combat onto people. It is so okay. annoying. I even don't like that in Hyrule Warriors when you want to change an item, you can't, the game doesn't pause for you. I know. Which I, I don't like at all, because it means I have to keep, like, evading everything while I'm trying to find the friggin' item to use to kill the thing. But, um, that's another reason why I never really play multiplayer that much. Even though it is easier, um... It is pretty fun, me and my brother played, me and my brother played it. <laughs> Now I'm going to save because we're about to go into a dungeon. And boy, oh, I love, I love this place. Well, I kind of love all of these places. I love the music in them. <laughs> but the graphics are really good for the time. They still look pretty good now, actually. Oh, and I, I and I hope you guys really love the singer who who did that one song because you're going to hear her a lot. Yeah, she has an intro every time you go to a place. 
She has a lot to say. <laughs> she does. <laughs> They say that wicked creatures prowl the road along this beautiful riverbank, but nobody's ever seen one. I once asked a man why. He simply replied, because anybody who happens upon one is promptly eaten. But it is long since anyone has met such a fate. For nowadays, people take another route, far away from the spooky old road. Only we walk the old way now. Travelers in crystal caravans. Ooh, spooky. Apparently they don't travel that far because almost <laughs> a little bit after you get into this place you already see some monsters. <sighs> if anyone who comes here is probably eaten, then how'd the stories get out anyway? Um, maybe, 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 like, there was a whole group of them and only one of them survived, I don't know. Uh, no, we're probably reading too much into it. Okay. Now, a lot of people really hate Ukes because their attack is pretty abysmal. But, I don't know. I mean, I think they kind of overreact a bit. Because I don't think their attack is that bad. Uh, yeah, they kind of are. I prefer to have more attack than magic, which is one of the reasons why I never played as a Duke. Personally, I, I just like, I like attack. Okay. I know there's an enemy. You, you, you asked him to carry it, jeez. Well, I was. The thing is, is that... Yeah, they're not that weak. At least not early on. Let's see. I think it's maybe because... Phoenix Down, remember all? Remember that? Yep, same in this game. Yep. If you have it equipped into your um, command list, then it automatically uh, revives you, so you don't need a friend. Yep. Which is good, because you don't, you don't have one, then it's like, well, crap, now I can't use it. Yeah, Phoenix Downs are almost essential for the final dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Hey, no throwing rocks from the back. That is not cool. Cheer. I know I hate that. I'm like, oh, really? You petty little thing. Go ahead. Get closer to me. I dare you. And one thing that's really good about Ukes is they get the most range. So an enemy cannot outrange you, which is great. Yeah, some enemies are, are annoying about that in this game, where they will try to back off and attack from the back to where you can't hit them. With Ukes, this really isn't as big of a problem, unless you have to use physical hits. Which isn't often, thankfully. Magic, though, oh, they're going to require that later on. Let's see. I don't have the map right in front of me, so I'm kind of feeling my way through this part of the dungeon. You don't remember? Uh, no. <laughs> It's been a while since I did a test run of this. Hey, hey, you're supposed to be fire-based. That shouldn't one-shot you. Freaking wuss. Yeah, you, you. if you heard that, that was me running against the barrier of my area of effect here. Now, I love this, um, because Mog oh, just... Yeah, he gets tired, you have to put yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, here's the thing, though. He just said he's wiped out. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, he's, he, he, he can carry it again. I'm like, really? For someone who's... I wouldn't want that to be realistic and have him take ten minutes of your gaming time. I know, but six freaking steps. I know. <laughs> I'm just like, wow. You recover pretty quick. Oh god, it's Goblin Chieftains. Yeah, they're big. They do double damage, too. Oh, secondary effects. We forgot to mention that. Um, each magical spell has a secondary effect that affects the enemy. Ah. Okay, that artifact you, um, you picked up. At the end of the game, you can choose one of the artifacts to improve on a certain stat in your game. Um, you mean, um, I think you meant to say the end of the dungeon, but... 
but yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, there are three. There are three spells that you get used the most of: fire, ice, and lightning. Each one has the same secondary effect. Fire will put the burn effect on enemies. When they're burned, they take double damage from everything. Um, ice will actually freeze them into a block of ice. If you strike it with a weapon, you do double damage, and it stuns them for a moment. Um, thunder magic will put the stun effect on them for an extended period of time where they can't move as quick. Very useful for fighting enemies that have lots of HP. Um, I tend to use fire the most, though, just because it kills stuff pretty quick. Oh god, not these. Oh, you will learn to hate these guys, because they're quick. You want them to get close to you before you let your spell off. Because they're very quick to evade your magical spell. And there's another one up here. There it is. And I'm backing off, because there's other enemies up there. Plus, if you go down that way, you can get to the Moogle Hall. If you go down, you can get to the Moogle Hall, too. Ah! Darn it! I'll just attack him! It was. That is, uh, not, not, not preferred, honestly. <laughs> Because if you try to attack it, he will attack you. Because he'll survive one hit. I'm not exactly the smartest fighter. I pretty much go in and kill. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm trying to get a good bonus too. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, I forgot to I mention. Don't I don't. Well, you I love using those pots that you passed. Pots? Oh yeah, the okay, elemental pots. For certain elements, the one right there is the one for fire. Yeah, it if is. You throw that. It creates a powder, and if you use the fire magic on it, then it creates this giant, this big um, area where fire will engulf the, the area. Observe. <laughs> Burn! Aww. Your projectiles. <laughs> Not so tough now, are ya? <laughs> ah, bronze, that's useful. Cool. Yeah, it is. Now, most most of these things I'm getting actually stay in my inventory, except for the artifacts. You can you, you can only pick one at the end of each dungeon, and you can you can you can get up to eight uh, selection. Um, now we've briefly mentioned the bonus here, but um, I'm gonna get into it more at the end, but. Believe me, you should care about the bonus, otherwise you're going to miss out on certain artifacts. Because there are certain ranks to getting certain artifacts, and the bonus points you get at the end will determine which rank you get. I believe how it works is, like, you you, you can get rank 1 to, one to 4 at the start, and as the game goes on, ranks 5 to 8 will start showing up in the dungeons. Oh yes, we have to talk about that too, I suppose. Um, as the game goes on, the the stages actually get progressively harder. And uh, as, as they get harder, harder enemies will show up, um, enemies will upgrade, and so will the boss of the area. And Yeah, you're probably all thinking this is like, oh, they just get a little upgrade. No, they get a major upgrade when you come back. They can seriously kick your ass. Yeah. It's like not a little upgrade, it's a huge upgrade. And there's usually more monsters, and even the boss at the end of the stage even changes his attack pattern. Yeah. Like, it's not easy stuff at all, which I appreciate. Also, you're probably wondering, hey, you haven't healed yourself this whole time. How come you're still at full health? Well, you you, you actually heal over time. At a very... As long as you're within the... Chalice. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's very slow, but you do regenerate over time. Believe me, that's going to be abused later. Because <laughs> enemies start getting kind of rough. And I don't feel like grinding for Phoenix Downs all day, so... Believe me, I'm making this game out to be a lot easier than it actually is. A lot You're on the first level, right? 
right now, but all of it's easy. Uh, when I came in here, starting out with uh, Clavet, things weren't so easy. I don't know, I had an easy time, and I always came in one more. Let's see. What about your first time playing, though? My first time playing was still pretty simple. Huh. Weird. 